I am not the strongest version of myself. No way, not by a long shot. And I'm not sure I ever was, man. Um, the truth is, I'm a hypocrite. I listened to a sermon this morning and the priest said that the word hypocrite in Greek comes from the term stage actor, someone who acts, someone who pretends. And uh, I look back at my over a decade of making YouTube videos. I started making YouTube videos in 2007. You know, when I first started out, I was just putting videos up to, you know, share what I was doing in the gym and show my friends and clients and stuff. But once I started to notice that I was getting attention from other people, uh, views from all around the world, that's when the hypocrisy began. And in retrospect, I can think about it and that's the fact. The minute I recognized that eyeballs were on me, um, I was no longer moving from a place of authenticity. And all this talk about being the strongest version of yourself, it was fake because I wasn't being the strongest version of myself uh, on multiple different levels. You know, today I'm talking about how my body has fallen apart, how I've abused myself, how I haven't taken my own advice in terms of fitness, nutrition, health, and lifestyle. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not 30%, maybe 20% of what God has called me to be. And that hurts. It hurts to know that you're living well below your potential, especially when you know that you, it's your choice. You can do something about it, right? It's not like, you know, someone who's a victim, uh, maybe it's not their fault, their fault, but if, if I'm not eating right, if I'm not training right, if I'm abusing my body, I'm expecting to perform like an elite level athlete uh, with all these injuries or repair myself. And um, I'm living a double life. I'm living, living a hidden life. Uh, not only does that hurt the body, right? Because there's no growth where there's no challenge. You know, there's no commitment. But also spiritually, mentally, you know, just for me in particular, and I'm not saying this as if it's uh, something everybody needs to do, but for me in particular, integrity is everything. It's, it's almost a pathological thing <laughs> how integrity is important to me. Again, I'm not saying this like to blow my horn or to boast like, oh, Elliot, integrity is so important. No, that's not it. It's, it's difficult for me to talk about things in a convincing way to coach people, to give advice, if I really am truly not doing it myself. Uh, it hurts me on the inside. And I think that's a big part of what God has been trying to show me, at least over the past 10 years, where my, you know, the luster of my YouTube stardom has waned, you know. And I think a part of the reason why God allowed me to go through this and to and to struggle with this lack of integrity and to expose myself as a hypocrite um, is, 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 is multiple fold. You know, number one, of course, of which is I love coming back and doing this series and I'm going to make it back. You know, I'm going to be better than I was before. You know, I've got all kinds of this, this bad injuries. You know, I tore this bicep, tore my Achilles tendon, my left leg. It's a mess. And so, you know, God gave me an opportunity to go the wrong way so that I could see that I'm going wrong and do the right thing. And, uh, and I know that's one part of it. Another part of it too is because I know that the reason why I'm here is to, I am a coach, I am a, I'm, a, I'm a mentor, I'm an example. I don't take that lightly. I don't take that for granted. In fact, you know, about five, six years ago when I had my reversion to Christianity, uh, that was a big part of it because it was like, if I'm not allowing Christ to lead me and I'm not following God's lead, then I'm leading men off a cliff. I'm lying to people and making them follow me. Don't follow me. I didn't, I realized how, how bad that was to make anybody follow me, especially if I wasn't a good follower of the truth myself, even in my integrity. You know, I say follow Christ, but Christ lives in me. Christ lives in you. And that, that, that distance between what you know is right and true, your conscience, you know, God speaks to you through your conscience. That's what Christ is. Christ is, it lives in your conscience. 
uh, if if that's off, um, that's hell. <laughs> you know, that's hell. That's lying to yourself. That's that's a spiritual, a mental, and a physical strike. So you know, the other reason why I think God put me through this, you know, besides the you know the alignment and you know my own personal journey, is as a coach, as a mentor. Um, I don't want to say expose, but I have to point out that like I went first down the YouTube rabbit hole. You know, I was one of the very early. I'm not again. I'm not boasting. I was one of the first guys to get popular on YouTube, and then just a few years later, you know, as soon as I started to, my star star started to wane. I see all these guys rising. I see so now there's so many YouTubers, so many guys. I mean. Good-looking guys, jack guys, smart guys. I mean, guys who've got it together in ways that I may have never had it together, but I can't help but think. And maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just a problem with me. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm the hypocrite and it's just me. I don't know. But I watch them, even the ones that have millions of subscribers, and I listen to the things they say, and I see the way they behave, and I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way that everything that they're saying they're doing everything that they're proposing, they really believe. I mean, I see people promoting supplements that they don't use. If you notice, I almost never promote any products that aren't my own, right? And again, I'm not saying this out of, out of boasting, but it's just an integrity thing for me. I've never come to you guys with a product and say, go buy this thing. The only supplement, the main supplement that I promoted over many years is Living Fuel, and I give it to all my kids. I still take it myself. There may have been one or two things here and there, but never been a brand ambassador and I look at these big YouTubers, podcasters, and um, maybe this is a bit of a warning to you guys if you you know if you idolize us, right? I know a lot of people don't idolize me anymore because I, 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 my star has fallen. but there's a lot of rising stars out there right now and I just want you to be careful. I want you to recognize that every man is fallen. every man has fallen short. Every man has sinned, and it's not a, a finger pointing thing. It's so that you, you don't believe anything that anybody says to you. You don't believe that what you see on the screen or in social media or on YouTube is actually true. And I'm not saying it because you need to be against those people, but you got to recognize that we have YouTubers have an agenda. You know, mentors have an agenda, coaches have an agenda, leaders have an agenda, and if we're not totally purged of our own internal weaknesses and have mortified our sins and our vices, man, not only are you going to be disappointed when you find out <laughs> that your, you know, your, your idol is not who you think they are, but you failed yourself. I failed you, but you've also failed yourself uh, by, you know, taking every word that I say for, for granted or every word that the next podcaster or YouTube takes for granted. Um, we got to learn how to be more discerning, fellas. And I, I, this is a tough one for me as well. This is why I'm talking to you guys like this today. Discernment means being able to sense internally the truth of a thing, even though it may excite you mentally and emotionally. There are so many things that are exciting to me, like ideas that I want to adopt. Like, And, and you got to understand something about me. I, I never intend to lie. I don't think most of us do. I, I never intend to lie, but I'm, I'm really and truly intrigued by certain ideas that may turn out to be false, but I share them with conviction because I want them to be true. I like these ideas. I, I have fun with them, but I don't even take my own self seriously a lot of times when I, I don't want to say spit the BS, but you know, I'm, I'm wrestling with ideas. And I think that's what a lot of other YouTubers and podcasts are doing. They're wrestling with ideas mainly so that we can apply them to ourselves and make ourselves better. Anything that anybody's giving you, it's got to be because they got it first. You know, I never, I never came to you with uh, anything about how to, how to be like shredded and six pack abs. Cause that's it's just not something that came naturally to me or is normal or, or, um, or anything that I, let me put it this way, suffered to achieve. Everything that I've achieved, I don't want to say everything I've achieved, but a lot of things that I've achieved, uh, it's because I'm genetically gifted. I'm genetically gifted to be strong. I'm genetically charismatic. There are a lot of things that come naturally to many of us 
that if we sit up there and say, oh, you should do the same thing. Oh, you should be like this too. Oh, let me show you how I got this way. We'd be full of shit, full of shit. Bodybuilders who say, oh, just follow my program. And you look just like me. It's like, no, uh, unless we have the same DNA, same mommy and daddy. Even then, my brother doesn't build muscle the way I do. I got four kids. Only one of them builds muscle the way I do. The other one's a long and lanky, like their mom and from her side of her family. So genetics, genetics is huge. So what is, what's the, what's the path forward? You know, where do we go from here? And so although most of us try to do better via the force of will, you know, I'm going to do better tomorrow. I'm going to make myself the man that I want to be. I'm going to use, use my the ego strength in order to overcome internal weakness, which is huge today. That's, that's what I, my whole industry is based on that, right? Get into the cold shower, get into the cold bath, fast a whole bunch of days, uh, you know, work out when you don't want to, right? This is all based on the force of will. This is, in many ways, it's us fighting against ourself, right? And you could say it's our higher self fighting against our lower self. It's the power of the spirit, the expansive capacity of our spirit doing battle with the flesh. And that's cool. That's great. That's, that's, that's wonderful. We should do that. But it has its limitations. It has a myriad of limitations. I can tell you from my own experience, absolutely 100% one of the limitations is pride. Pride. If I achieve something, and I think this is a part of the reason why God has kept this thorn in my side. If I achieve something myself and I don't get divine help, if I don't ask for divine help, if I don't recognize divine help through gratitude, my ego will swell beyond comprehension. I know that's a big place where I was before. So we got to deny ourselves and that's different than willing ourselves. Denying yourself is a passive purgation. It's a passive process. It's saying no. Sometimes that takes a force of will, but it also requires a letting go, a yielding, right? Yielding into the, to the pain in your stomach when you're fasting, right? Not forcing yourself through it, but just allowing it, meaning allow the pain to be there. Yielding into the challenges in your life, no matter what they are, right? And yielding means getting out of the way and allowing God to take over in this context. So when we, when I struggle, when I struggle and I know that if I just force myself and will myself and use my ego to overcome, I'm oftentimes not in a better place. I may actually be in a worse off place if I triumph. I, I have a big, I'm, I'm sort of starting to see that this is why God has kept me in this tunnel for so long in my life because he wants to purge that sense of pride that comes from overcoming with my own ego. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a passage in Matthew in the Bible, uh, 1721, where there's this guy that comes that the, his, Jesus' students bring, his disciples bring this guy and this guy's all messed up. He's got problems. Right? He's not, he's not the strongest version of himself, and everybody can see it. In the gospel, it says that he's afflicted with a demon. Right? This guy's possessed. Right? Who knows what that means? Who, who, which one of us isn't possessed by a demon? Which one of us is not afflicted? Let me put it, that's a better way. Which one of us are not afflicted by a demon? Which one of us are not oppressed and having the best version of ourselves, strongest version of ourselves, suppressed? by demonic, by the demonic, right? Or the diabolical is even a better way to say it because if I say demon, you might think, oh, you know, furry creature with horns. But the diabolical, to be diabolical means to be divided. You, the two parts of you fighting on the inside, that's diabolical. Which one of us isn't struggling with some form of, form of diabolical, right? And so, you know, his disciples, they, they all struggled too, but they were out there helping people, healing people. And they bring this one dude, Jesus, we don't know what to do. And Jesus looks at them and tells them, hey, look, 
this type does not come out. You can't fix this. You don't fix this problem. You don't fix this diabolical affliction unless you pray and fast. It comes, he says that it comes out only by prayer and fasting. What is Jesus talking about? And what does that have to do with us? What does that have to do with us? It has 100% to do with self-denial. It has 100% to do with taking the center of focus off the ego and placing it on the divine. And, and I'm not here to convert anybody, but that divine is, is internal and external. It's your soul. It's your spirit. It's, it's happening in here, but it's so much bigger than us. And when we fast, we're not just fasting for fat loss and autophagy and all that stuff, man. When Jesus talks about fasting, he's not talking about trimming your waistline. He's talking about denying the part of yourself that the diabolical is attached to, the flesh. The flesh. I know the weakness of my flesh. That's why my flesh has been beaten and battered for the past several years. But at the same time, God has taught me how to fast and why to fast. It's to deny those diabolical afflictions. It's to deny the beast on the inside that takes no consideration for higher things, you know, divine things. And when I say divine things, you know, the divine manifests itself in the physical world through virtue, right? Honesty, generosity, charity, faith, hope, charity, right? Fruits of the Holy Spirit, you know, kindness, goodness, patience, uh, self-control, you know, all these things. Fasting is like practice to reach these states. But once again, fasting is not like a diet. It's not like you're going to do something. You're denying, you're denying yourself, you know, and there's all different types of fasting, but, you know, every time we eat, we feed the beast. I know that it feels that way for me. Maybe it's not the way for everybody, but I know it's the way for me. Food, I say that there's, it's the three, well, food is up there, but then there's the three W's, weed, wine, and women, right? And food is right up there. A lot of people, it's the food addictions, but food, it, we're all addicted to food. We live in a consumption society. But any of these things that we're addicted to is because they give us a sense of false pride that's associated with it. And we know that pride is the first of all, of all the sins, is even people who are depressed, Yo, it's pride. People, whatever it is, it all begins with pride. Uh, and it's and because pride means I'm doing it. It means I'm in charge. So fasting. And then prayer as well. What is prayer? Prayer is lifting your heart to the divine, right? Prayer in the, in the mental prayer sense, the ancient faith teaches, it's conversation with Christ. It's having conversation with your inner being. To, to me, I, you know, I don't know if this is biblical or even Christian tradition, right? I'm Catholic, and so it's all about tradition. But I know that if I'm going to be talking to Christ, it's going to, it's going to be my imagination. It's going to be my conscience, right? Unless I'm reading scripture. That's the only objective truth. Otherwise, all my prayer is subjective. And if I'm living in a state of mortal sin or I'm addicted to food, you know, because I'm not fasting, those prayers, I don't want to say they fall in deaf ears because it is your conscience, but they lack potency because of attachment. We got to mortify our flesh before we go into prayer. This video is not about prayer, but man, prayer is so damn important. So important. Prayer, meditation, they're, they're almost, they kind of work together. They're almost like the same thing. Where meditation, in many ways, it's just blanking the mind so that you can commune with the divine. Prayer is that conversation. Christ, what should I do right now? How do you see me? How do you see my life unfolding? What did you bring me here for? Right? Christ in you. Christ in me is going to talk a little different than a Christ in you. Because it's subjective. Christ is subjective in this context. I'm not talking about scripture, I'm talking about conversation, relationship, right? If we have a, if we have a calm, uh, honest conversation with Christ internally through mental prayer, we can overcome anything. The answers are revealed to you. 
What we're supposed to do is given to us. He literally lays it on my lap when I ask in humility and honesty, and I've humbled myself with fasting. I want to wrap this up by saying that we have an opportunity right now, all of us, but I'm talking to Christians in particular, uh, not just Catholics, but it's about the season that's upon us. We have a season coming up right now called Lent. And I know that there's a lot of controversy over it. And I think, I think that it's almost funny and it's silly that there's controversy over it because every tradition, every religion has its seasons of prayer, fasting, almsgiving, you know, penance. Look at the Muslims. There's a reason why so many white boys, Western boys, are converting to Islam. Because it requires challenge. It requires self-denial. They want to do Ramadan. Well, the tradition is the same. The tradition of Christianity is Lent. That's available to us also. But with, you know, the splits in the church, the, the Protestant revolution, you know, or, or revolt, you might say, um, a lot of tradition got thrown away. Fasting is not necessarily biblical, it's tradition. And everything that's tradition isn't necessarily bad, right? Tradition is, is there because it helps you hold tight to the wisdom of the past. Hold on to the wisdom of the past. Don't throw it out with the baby. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater and say Bible only, but that's for another story. If you're looking for a renewal in life, if you're looking for integrity in life, you're looking for communion, conversation, and unity with God, join me. Join me starting Wednesday. This Wednesday. Today's Monday. I started fasting today. I'm doing a 72-hour fast, but you don't have to do that. The Christian tradition is to start 40 days before Easter. 40 days before Easter, Lent begins, not including Sundays. And Christians deny themselves through fasting, unite ourselves with God through prayer, and show love and charity to one another through almsgiving. I was thinking about making a video all about Lent, all about prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. I might still do that. Today, I just wanted to kind of lay my truth out and be vulnerable and honest with you about where I'm failing and why Lent is so important for me to reunite with God, with the divine, with my creator, with my mind, right? With my higher mind, uh, that I can't pass this up. And you know I've been dabbling with religion my whole life. I just love religion. I'm a weirdo that way, I guess. I don't know. And I'm never about trying to convert anybody or, or telling anybody what to do. It's purely selfish for me. <laughs> Maybe it makes me a bad Christian. But anyway, in the past, I've done, I've done Ramadan. I've done uh, the Baha'i fast season. That's how I learned about spiritual fasting. I was probably like 19, 20 years old. And I, I discovered a religion that I thought was the one for me. And it was one for me at the time. And, and, and as soon as I joined, the first thing they said was, hey, you know, this is our fasting season. I think I must have joined that faith like, you know, in like around this time of year, February, March. And I think it's in March. They do a 21 day fast. And I was like, yes, I'm going to do it. I got to tell you, man. Probably the biggest quantum leap of evolution that I ever experienced in my life happened that year. It must have been like 2001, right? That's the year of 9-11, I think. All, the, the, the biggest transformation I ever experienced was the first time I fasted, and it was a religious fast. It was a spiritual fast. And so if you are watching this and you're in, comment down below. If you're a Christian or not, if you're secular, uh, doesn't matter. But if you're also interested in health and fitness, because, you know, that is a part of it. We are mortifying our flesh, but it is good for our health as well. Uh, don't want to make this into a commercial, but I've decided to put my black fast bodybuilding routine on sale for $7. And I'll put a link down below for you to be able to check that out. You don't have to do it. 
it just gives you a structure by which we do the black fast, which is traditional Christian fasting, which means 3 p.m. We, you know, it's like an 18 six fast start break fast at 3 p.m. If you're Christian, you don't eat meat on Wednesday and Friday, especially to this week, Ash Wednesday and, you know, Good Friday right before Easter. But, but none of that is, is pressed on you by pain of sin. Lent is not even, Lent, Lent in austerities is not even, it's not biblical. It's not necessary, but it's an opportunity. It's a great opportunity. Why not take it up? Why not unite yourself with millions of Christians worldwide for over a thousand years and participate in this time of renewal? So that's where I'm at with things. Maybe let me know, comment down below if you want to hear me tell you more about what I'm doing for Lent. Why I think Lent is important. I can give you the history of Lent. I think these things are all very important. Um, but the bottom line of this video is to let you know that old Uncle Yo is repentant. I'm repentant. I'm repenting to you. I'm repenting to God, uh, which means turn around. But I've still been a hypocrite in front of the camera, pretending like I'm better than I actually am. I'm a fallen man. Right? And I don't mean that in a way to like self-deprecate. I mean fallen meaning like I'm living in the third dimension and everything that's in the third dimension is of a lower vibration. And so I struggle. I struggle with sin. I struggle with addiction. I struggle with anger and frustration and greed and envy. All kinds of shit. All, I'm a fallen man. And I'm done pretending. I'm done pretending that I'm not gluttonous. You know? That's why you know, fa Lent is a great time. No alcohol, that's what I'm doing, no alcohol, no sugar, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, this video's run long enough. If you want me to tell you more about what I'm doing for Lent, my thoughts about Lent, and you know, kind of go down that rabbit hole, because I understand, you know, it's a fitness channel. Uh, Uncle Yo likes to talk about all kinds of different things, but just trying to keep it focused for y'all. I think it's related, but I honor you, my viewer. I honor you, my audience. And I don't want to just shove stuff down your throat, right? That you're not going to like. And the click-through rate's going to be bad. <laughs> Watch time is going to be low. Um, so I'm working on being true, transparent, honest, and authentic. But also in relationship with you. I appreciate you. My life is what it is because of YouTube. There's no question about it. I was a warehouse gym personal trainer, training people in the park with trash. And because of YouTube... I became Yo Elliot. Because of YouTube, Strength Camp became a household name in a way, <laughs> at least for anybody who lives. And uh, and I don't I, I never want to forget you guys, and I never want to disrespect you guys like I have in the past. I've disrespected you guys in the past by not making videos, by uh, you know disappearing and not holding up my end of the deal, my end of the bargain, and of course. Just being a hypocrite. So those days are over. It's a clean slate. I don't feel bad about myself. I have no guilt. I have no shame. That's not what this video is about. This is about restoration. This is about restoring my relationship with you, the viewer. And I'd love for us to be together on some things. I understand we're all different. And I'm not trying to convince anybody. But if we can go into 2024 with a solid, strong, Lenten repentance and free ourselves from sin, nothing can stop us, man. It's the sin that holds us back. The enemy knows that. That's why he gets us all to commit these all types of mortal sins, but mostly sexual sin. Because once you've been corrupted sexually, it's hard to turn around. You see how tough it is to, to, to know fap, right, fellas? You see how, how insidious pornography is, right? Satan knows that once he's got you fornicating, your father has lost all authority. We don't even live in a world that believes fathers have authority, but it's because of sexual sin. Right? Every time, especially young women when they go outside the home. So anyway, I'm starting to rant. We run it up on 30 minutes here. Just wanted to give you guys a, a fresh cut and, uh, and open up this conversation. Let me know what you think, dudes. Done.